At the start of the new year, every small business owner is asking themselves the same question. What's the one move I can make that'll take my business to the next level in 2024? LinkedIn Jobs knows that your success all depends on the team you surround yourself with. That's why LinkedIn Jobs has created the tools to help find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. Elizabeth, one of the things that I've been wanting to do is to upgrade and streamline my newsletter. And I knew to do that, I had to work with the very best people. And I knew that to put together a team like that, I could turn to LinkedIn Jobs because LinkedIn Jobs makes it so easy to identify the right people for the right job. LinkedIn also knows that small businesses are wearing so many hats and might not have the time or resources to hire. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash Gretchen. That's linkedin.com slash Gretchen to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Hello, we're here for More Happier, a podcast where we get more happier. Every other Saturday, we kick back with more happiness conversations with the looser vibe. Hey, Elizabeth. Hi, Grouch. Today, we'll talk about something that makes me happy when I'm riding the subway, and Elizabeth suggests some quality screen time. But first, something making us more happier. Elizabeth, what is making you more happier? What is making me more happier is that Sarah and I are going on one of our writing team adventures. You know, one of Uh the things I love about being a writing team is that we do have these adventures, big and small. Yeah. We planned a little trip to Seattle because we're writing a spec script, meaning we're just writing it. It's not for anybody. I mean, it's Mm. with somebody, but it's not for a network. Mm. Yeah. And it's set in Seattle in the 1800s. And so we decided to go to Seattle, take some tours, Ah. go to the Gold Rush Museum. So we're going to go. We're also going to have a Happier in Hollywood meetup, just something casual for, you know, anybody who wants to come. We'll say in our Facebook group when and where. Good. And hopefully announce it on the show. So, yeah, it's going to be super fun. So I have to ask you, are you two going to come up with a team drink the way you had the espresso martini? Yes, we have been trying to figure out what it is. We had the espresso martini on our cruise. We realized we should have waited and had that in (laughs) Seattle. Coffee. Because it's the home of coffee. So we have been looking to see if there's another relatively common coffee drink. No, no. I think you should lean into the gold of it all. I bet there's a cool drink with like a gold theme because isn't that more the theme of this trip? Yes. The gold Gold rush, rush. perhaps. So anyway, yeah, yeah, we are, but we have not forgotten. We are trying to figure out what our team drink is going to be. Because you love a theme. You love a memento. Is there a mug? Is there a t-shirt? Well, you know now that, you know, No Spend February is over. There will be a mug purchased for sure. Yeah. Well, or maybe it's got somehow Roar 24 themed. Like if there's a drink that's like the lion, I don't know, ale or something like that. I don't know. Well, someone pointed out Seattle's also all about micro brewing. Oh, yes. But, you know, Sarah and I are not big beer drinkers, but maybe we should lean into the beer of it all and try some different beers, which we would not normally do. Right. So, yeah, we'll see. We're pondering, but I love the adventure of it. You and I like our sister adventures. Yes. Um, Sarah and I like these adventures. It just keeps life interesting, and you don't know exactly what's going to happen every day. So it just puts a spring in my step. But also now that you two work remotely, it's probably even more invigorating and sort of idea generating to have that time in person. Because part of what this is, is you're out of your routine and you're going to new places and having new experiences that feed your creativity. But it's also just the two of you being together where you have to make a point of that now. Absolutely. And that's why we've started our Roar 24. So as you said, our theme for 24 is Hear Us Roar 2024. Mm -hmm. And so we've started our Roar 24 where we spend a day together. So this will be extended Roar 24. Well, I have to point out it's 24 hours because that subtlety evaded me the first time you mentioned that it's The reason that it's Roar 24 is that it's 24 hours. Yes, yes. You know, we love those, what is that, a mnemonic? Catchphrases, mnemonics. Yeah, exactly. exactly. So that's making me happier, and I'm sure I'll be reporting on our trip and 
upcoming yes. weeks. What's making you more happier? Well, you know, I have like a side passion. Well, maybe not so side about clutter clearing and organization. And I just find it so fun to think about. It's actually more fun to think about it than to do it. And it's more fun to like help other people clear their clutter than to clear your own clutter. So I've been begging my friends to see if I could come over and help them clear their clutter. In an upcoming episode, we're going to be talking about outer order, inner calm, spring cleaning organization. So everybody send in your hacks, your resources, any ideas that you have. But I'm just finding it fun even thinking about bringing it up, kind of the whole spring cleaning. Everybody's talking about it during that time. And I find that immensely satisfying. A friend of mine is cleaning out his basement and garage area. And every time I see him, I'm like, okay, I need an update. What's going on with the shelves? What are you doing about the floor? Have you attacked the pile of shoes? And so I'm getting a huge vicarious thrill from him. What I can't believe, Gretchen, is that you wrote an entire book about clutter clearing, and then it doesn't cover everything. Like you still have more ideas I know. all the time that aren't in the book. Yes. Read Outer Order, Inner Calm if you want. Volume one. And listen, we have our bingo cards. We like. There's just so many ways to tackle this. Anyway, I, I don't know why. I just, I find it very invigorating. I recently cleaned out my office and I just felt so much better. Here's something interesting. It's probably because you've rubbed off on me. Mm. Even though I don't like to clear clutter, I don't clear a lot of clutter. I somehow found myself belonging to a decluttering Facebook group. Uh-huh. So I do, you know, I like my Facebook groups, my Mahjong yes. group, my yes. table setting group, all these yes. different groups. And so now I'm in a decluttering one and I do enjoy reading about other people decluttering. Yes. And reading tips and people are discussing what room should I start with for decluttering and what are their methods. So even those of us who don't love it as much as you can sort of get a thrill out of experiencing someone else decluttering. Well, it's funny. I've had this feeling sometimes when I was writing Outer Order, Inner Calm, and even when I was writing Better Than Before, which is all about habit change, is I think that there's kind of an aspirational aspect of reading Mm. these books where you get a feeling of accomplishment just from reading the book, even if you're not actually taking action. And I don't know if that's good or bad, because maybe it's like you're scratching the itch without actually having your actions follow. But maybe one of the ways to get yourself to change is to put yourself in the company of people and ideas that are what you're aiming for. And so I always thought about that. I was like, I think a lot of people read more than they do. Right. But maybe that's okay. And it's nice to spend time in that world, even if it's not your world. It's a nice calming place. It is a calming place. I'm sure we don't all, for instance, do the Marie Kondo method, but people enjoy thinking about purses inside purses, even if they'll never do it. But you know, one thing, Elizabeth, that you know about me, and I think anybody who actually knows me in person knows, but sometimes people are surprised by is I think that I might give off this air that I have like matching hangers and all of our spices are super organized and we have like all of our baking things in beautifully matched jars. That is just not the case. It's not that it looks that visually orderly. It's just that I know where my hammer is. Right. You are not a Martha Stewart. No, no, no. Like Martha Stewart has that. Yes. Like gardening tools and all of that. You are not that person. You're actually very casual. Yes. I'm much more the functional part of it than the aesthetic part of it. Yes. Which really is a much lower bar because things can be organized, but if they don't have to look exactly right, that makes things easier. But some people really get into the presentation of the order where that's not so much for me. So anyway, I enjoy thinking about this stuff. I'm glad that it's spring and that voice gives me, you know, it's calendar of catalysts. This is a time when everybody starts talking about it and it's something that uh, that I enjoy. So that's something that's making me more happier. Oh, good. Well, coming up, there's something you've been meaning to tell me about the subway. But first, this break. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. What's the first thing you'd do if you had an extra hour in your day? Would you go for a run or maybe do yoga, meditate, watch an extra TV show, spend time with your family? Well, one way to really figure out your priorities in life is to go to therapy. 
I know in my life, Gretchen, whenever I've been in therapy, I've had such a clear vision of what is important to me and how to move forward and how to get in the things that I want to do. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, and it's designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Learn to make time for what makes you happy with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Gretchen Rubin today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Gretchen Rubin. Okay, Gretch, this is intriguing. There's something you've been meaning to tell me about the subway in New York. You ride the subway every day. Yeah. Tell me. Okay. And Alyssa, you're familiar with the subway, but you haven't ridden it as regularly. So yeah, I ride the subway all the time. And one of the things that makes me really happy on the subway, well, first of all, you see people reading novels. And I'm super curious that I'm always sneaking around so that I can see what they're reading, which is fun. But what really makes me happier, and I only sort of realized this pattern recently, is how often people are studying on the subway. So sometimes this will be like high school kids, but then sometimes, most of the time, it's adults. And again, I'm kind of nosy, and so I will like sidle around so that I can look over and see what they're doing. It's pretty easy to tell that's what somebody's doing, because you know how it's often those sort of oversized paper, what do you call them? They have like the plasticky cover, the paperback. It's like if you if you get any kind of study guide, they sort of have this way that they look. Yes. And often people will be writing in them or consulting, flipping back and forth. So I can tell that they're studying. And what kind of things are they studying? So there's patterns. So a lot of people are studying things related to medicine, interesting, like occupational therapy, medical stuff, teachers, like where there's things where it's clearly about teaching something. English as a second language, of course, New York City, there's so many people who are here who speak other languages, so they're working on their English. Um, a lot of people doing some kind of religious studies, whether that's Bible studies or other texts, often in you know languages that I can't read. But you know, there's kind of that feeling, that vibe yes. that you get when somebody's, you know, when it's a religious text. And then just a smattering of all different things. And, you know, and I just, it makes me so happy because it's like, you know, it's that American self-improvement. We're going to make things better. And then there's like that New York hustle where like, I'm working on the subway. I've got 40 minutes on the subway. I'm not going to just sit here and scroll on my phone. I'm going to like pull out my workbook and study my technical Mm -hmm. vocabulary. Some of it is like industrial too, where it's like, parts of machines. Like some of it, I don't even really understand what I'm looking at. I'm like, that looks really complicated. I'm glad you're studying it. It looks important. I'm not exactly sure what it is. Well, this makes me think of a couple of things, Gretch. One, you know, mom and dad, our parents are so into lifelong learning, right? They are both constantly learning new things. Uh, Dad is always reading history books and learning a new like chunk of world history. And then and not all- the obvious ones, too. He's not <laughs> no. always just studying World War II. It's like he gets into, like, deep history. Yes, yes, yes. It also just makes me miss being in New York where you have all this time where you're with people who are different from you in a million ways, you know? Yes. And you're with them in the subway you know, hours of your week are spent that way. And it's so fun and interesting to be exposed to different types of people. And that's just a lot harder in LA because obviously we're in our cars so much. You just don't have that. And I think that's one of the things that New York has over L.A. You know, I love L.A., but that is something I love about New York. Well, it's funny because until you mentioned that, I I hadn't really thought of that. But it is true. It's like this, like, experience where everybody comes together and people are coming and going. And, you know, I'm so, like, this is why I wrote Life in Five Senses. I'm just up in my head. I get preoccupied, so I'm not that attentive unless I'm, like— I need to fill up my five senses journal today. Like, what am I seeing? It's always a struggle for me. But Eleanor, my daughter Eleanor, she loves the subway because she loves the people watching. 
And the other day we had to go and do an errand and I was just staring at the signs above me and not really thinking about much. And we came out, she's like, oh, did you notice this guy? He was doing this and this. And then there was this couple across from us and this was his vibe and this is what he was saying. And then you could tell that she was thinking X, Y, Z. So to her, it was all these like mini dramas and stories playing out. And I thought, wow, I really should take advantage of this because I like the people watching and kind of uh, dreamily watching them People pass by and sort of looking at what everybody's wearing and what they're doing. But she really is keying into sort of like, well, what are, what are they? She's actually kind of snooping. You know? Yes, <laughs> I'm like, like Eleanor. If I'm yeah, in a restaurant, you are. I am that person who's like you listening are a noticer. to the conversation you, and going, wait, are they on a first date? Oh, my yes, gosh. Are they about yes. to break up? Oh, yes. this teenager is really mad at his mom. Like, I yes. love eavesdropping. Yes. That's probably why I like reality TV. Yes, exactly. It's kind of that. You know what is so, again, this is something that makes me happier on the subway, is you see these little children, not babies, young toddlers, and they're just looking around, and they're just mm. looking at all these faces. And most people smile back when, like, a yes. little kid like that makes that contact with you. He smiles, or they give a little wave. And it's just so sweet, you know, just to see them. They're just looking and looking and looking. And, um, you know, it's all these faces. And it's, it's just quiet, and there's at. sort of this... It's just this moment of transition, and and maybe it's the motion. You know how children are often comforted when you're, like, in a moving vehicle or something? But children don't often – they're not often, like, crying on the subway, which is mm. which is interesting. Yeah. yeah, it is. Yeah. Anyway, so I just like the idea that all these people around me, they're reading and they're studying and, you know, making good use of that time it makes me happy. You love people to use a pocket of time, Gretch. I do. <laughs> I do. Exactly. And um, what is our spotlight on a tool? Well, this is very appropriate given that I was just talking about how much I love clearing clutter and just thinking about it. If you also love to learn about clearing clutter, or maybe you don't love learning so much, but you want to, I have a new hub on my website. So I have these hubs, if you look at the top navigation bar, where it's a place to start with all the things that I've written a lot about. So if you look for organization, you'll see all the best of content gathered there. So there's frequently asked questions, there's my outer order intercom manifesto, it shows you the tools. If you like the bingo cards, like the clear the decks, it's all there. So if you are starting to think about spring cleaning or just getting organized generally, there's a lot of things to get you going. And that is happiercast.com slash organization. And that's that's new. That's a new thing I put together okay. in honor of spring cleaning. Yay. All right, Gretch, coming up, I've got some quality screen time to talk to you about. But first, the spring. Building a portfolio with Fidelity Basket Portfolios is kind of like making a sandwich. It's as simple as picking your stocks and ETFs, sort of like your meats and other topics, and managing it as one big, juicy investment. Mmm, now that's pretty good. Learn more at fidelity.com slash baskets. Investing involves risk, including risk of loss. Fidelity Brokerage Services, LLC. Member NYSC SIPC. My closet was chaotic, crammed with a bunch of clothes, but nothing to wear. The game changer, upgrading to high quality, affordable pieces from Quince. Now I have a wardrobe of luxury essentials that transition from one occasion to the next, and I stayed on budget. Gretchen, I got from Quince these super soft fleece wide leg pants in black, and I actually look put together when I go to pick up Jack from school. They have 100% Mongolian cashmere sweaters for $50, organic cotton sweaters, washable silk tops, and timeless 14 karat gold jewelry. And the best part is that all Quince items are priced 50 to 80% less than similar brands. Indulge in affordable luxury. Go to quince.com slash Gretchen for free shipping on your order and 365 day returns. That's Q-U-I-N-C-E dot com slash Gretchen to get free shipping and 365 day returns. Quince.com slash Gretchen. This year, I am focused on saving and investing, but I still want to do things like travel. NerdWallet lets you compare top travel credit cards side-by-side -side to maximize your spending, some even offering 10 times points on your spending, which means you could end up with a free flight or maybe a better hotel room. 
So what could future you do with smarter financial decisions? Compare and find smarter credit cards, savings accounts, and more today at nerdwallet.com. NerdWallet. Finance smarter. Reminder, credit is subject to lender approval and terms apply. Elizabeth, what is this quality screen time that you wanted to recommend to me? Okay, so as you know, I have been listening to Barbara Streisand's memoir, My Name is Barbara, which is 48 hours long, so it's very detailed. There's something about the number 48. It really feels, yes. But the thing is, because it's so long, she really goes into detail about a lot of different projects. Mm -hmm. And it has inspired me to go back and watch different Barbara Streisand things. Ah. And two things that I've gone back and watched are A Star is Born Mm -hmm. and The Way We Were. Ah. And I've seen both before. Uh You know, A Star is Born has been made four times now. I think hers was the third time, and then Lady Gaga and Bradley Cooper did the fourth. That's such a great story. And then The Way We Were is a very famous sort of romantic drama that she and Robert Redford made in 1973. Mm. And it's just, I love going back and watching with the knowledge of what she talked about in different scenes. Well, one of my secrets of adulthood is the more you know, the more you notice. So do you find mm-hmm. that you sort of are appreciating it at a completely different level now that you have you have all this backstory? Oh, yeah. I mean, for instance, she talked about there's a very famous scene in The Way We Were where she's on the phone to Hubble, Robert Redford, and they've broken up. And she's saying, will you just come over and sit with me because I'm so upset I need to talk to my best friend, but the problem is you're my best friend, so I don't have anyone to talk to. It's an amazing conversation. And she talks in the book about how because she was so emotional, she sort of automatically put her hand in front of her face for a lot of the take, and then the director didn't do another take because it was her performance was so good, but it absolutely drives her nuts that her hand is in front of her face because she feels mm. like her face would say so much. Ah. And she really regrets that there weren't more takes. Ah. So, of course, then when I went and watched it, That scene came, and I never would have noticed that, you know, had I not heard this whole thing. And there's different little moments, like when she brushes his hair out of his face, which is a very famous gesture. That was, you know, a spontaneous thing she did, and then she Ah. ended up deciding to do it a few times, so it became this sort of motif that's very famous. And then in A Star is Born, there's similar things, takes where she talks about things where Chris Christopherson starred in that. And he wasn't really an actor. He was a rock star. Mm. And so she talked about like a take where he got shy and he turned around because he was embarrassed, the actor. And then, but she turned him back around as Barbara Streisand. Oh. She's like, but it worked for the characters. So it's still in the movie. Uh And all of these things. Right. Well, it reminds me, you know, we've talked about being a minor expert, like the pleasure of going a little bit deep in something. And so you're kind of a minor expert. And I think like you're on this journey with Barbara yeah. Streisand. So you're a minor expert. And again, it's like this is the fun of it because, first of all, you were inspired to go back to those movies, yes. which are huge classics. And like something like that, you see it so differently at different times of your life. I'm sure both yeah. of those oh, movies, yes. you know, so there's that wanting to go back. And then you're a different kind of viewer because you know to look for these things or you have things to judge or to evaluate that would have just rolled over you yes. as a viewer. Yeah, her outfits, for instance, many times mm. she wears her own clothes, really, especially in A Star is Born, which I guess makes sense. Mm. So it's an interesting. She talks about many of the outfits, so that's interesting. But one funny thing, Gretchen, is... Mm. Her nails, and she mentions this in the book. Her fingernails? Her fingernails. She's Barbara Streisand is famous for her long fingernails. Just in life. Just in In life. In life. Okay. Yeah, so then it's funny because in The Way We Were, there's this young woman who's, you know, a young communist and works five jobs and is from, you know, Brooklyn And is just very practically running around, getting things done. And then she has these really long, bright red, perfectly Mm. manicured fingernails, which just wouldn't be the case. Right. And so I got a kick out of that. And it made me realize how 
nothing is really timeless. You know, you can mm. try to make something timeless, but there's right. always some evidence of the time peeking through. So even though this movie yeah. starts in like 1937, mm. there was still 1973 present on the screen. Yes. Yeah, well, we've talked about that with when you're trying to like redo your bathroom. You think you're making these neutral, timeless choices, but you just cannot escape your taste and like what is the zeitgeist. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I remember somebody telling me or reading somewhere that with forgeries, art forgeries, one of the things is they're often more successful at the time that they're made and sort of put out into the world, but that over time, people become more aware of what's wrong because things like perspective or people's faces will be wrong. But since you're seeing it through the lens of your own time, it looks right. But then later on, when things move on, you're sort of like, wait, this doesn't look like a Renaissance painting. What's going on here? Oh. So again, it is how how our own time do you think that she was sort of like, okay, I'm just going to add this complexity to this character and give her this detail that's very unexpected and in this way get people to think, wow, she has depth and you know, there's more to her that I'm seeing on the screen? Or do you think Barbra Streisand was just like, I love my nails and like they're coming with me in whatever character I go forth to portray? I think she loves her nails. They're her real nails, which she's very proud of. She's always mm -hmm. had real oh. nails. Well, that's probably it. She didn't want to, yeah. she didn't want didn't to trim want to her real nails. real nails. I think probably she loves her nails. You know, she had a lot of insecurity about her looks and, you know, her nails were something she loved. And she probably didn't realize how much it would stick out over time. Right. And then because she's Barbara Streisand, what she wants goes. So should yes. anyone have questioned her, she would have just said, oh, the nails are staying. And they would sure. have said, yes, Miss Streisand, wonderful. Yes. So not much pushback. But, you know, you forget because she's such a legend. Like, you forget how just entertaining she is to watch. But mm -hmm. I really recommend if you haven't seen these movies or it's been, like, for me, it had been so long, I barely remembered them. Right, yeah. They really are just entertaining to mm -hmm. watch. Well, so, Elizabeth, I may have never even mentioned this to you, but I have always felt had a special feeling for the way we were because... When I deli I was in the hospital after having given birth to Eleanor, and there was a TV that had the way we were, but I couldn't get the sound to work. And they, they I didn't get Eleanor back for a really long mm. time because the doctor had to look at her. And, you know, I was just like, this young mother, I just having a baby. I'm like, where the heck is my baby? Yeah. And I was trying to distract myself, but I couldn't get the sound on. And I was like, is it broken? Am I just incapable of figuring out what button to push? It was this nightmarish thing where I was sort of wanted to watch it, and I could see it. But I couldn't remember the story well enough. So anyway, I should see it again and get rid of that memory yes. because it's not a good memory of that. It was a happy time, but I was frustrated because Eleanor had not yet appeared. And so that's my connection to the way we were. Oh, I love that. There's nothing that's more surreal and more memorable than those few hours right after birth, giving birth. Oh my gosh. I just remember yes. having a diet Dr. Pepper after I gave birth to Jack and... Nothing will ever taste so good oh. in my whole life. Oh, now that's a happy memory. Yes. I want to go have a Diet Dr. Pepper right this second. It was the best. I actually have some in my apartment, so I will go have a Diet oh, Dr. Good. Pepper. Oh, right good. We'll this have second. it in honor of Baby Jack. <laughs> now we have a theme. We have yeah. a Jack soft drink. Who knew? That's right. Okay, yes. to go along with Everyone your espresso martini. Theme. Yes. Okay. Okay, Gretch, what is our quotation this week? This comes from Anne Truitt, her book, Daybook, The Journal of an Artist. She writes, the hallmark of a decision in line with one's inner development is a feeling of having laid down a burden and picked up a more natural responsibility. So, Elizabeth, are you feeling more happier? I am feeling so much more happier, Gretch. Thank you to Chuck. Get in touch. Gretchen's on Instagram, Threads, Facebook, and TikTok at Gretchen Rubin. And I'm on Instagram and Threads at Liz Craft. Our email address is podcast at GretchenRubin.com. And for everything related to this episode, links, photos, and more, go to HappierCast.com. Bye, Gretchen. Bye, Elizabeth. The best time to start a happiness project is 20 years ago. The second best time is now.
So, Liza, which movie did you prefer, The Way We Were or A Star is Born? Oh, my God. They're so different, Gretch. I have to tell you, I love them both. I mean, probably The Way We Were, if I Uh had to pick. I mean, Robert Redford. It's at yeah. his peak. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's just hard not to love Robert Redford. Okay. All right. Because now I'm inspired great. to watch both. Yeah. Okay. Great. From the Onward Project. <laughs> 